All right. So everybody, welcome to our webcast today where we're going to be talking with you about PDM Anywhere. And obviously a lot of the impetus for creating a presentation like this was to talk about what we've been doing for the last year and how we can continue to use SOLIDWORKS PDM or just a PDM tool in general in multiple different ways. What can we get out of our tools like PDM Standard and how can we eventually progress this and what all can we really do with it? So to get us started, I'm going to run through very quickly who we are, and then we'll start going through this presentation. So who are we? I'm Nick Sweeney. I am the host of this presentation. I'll be kind of introducing the different topics as we go, and I'll be kind of shifting it over to my colleagues, Joe Frank and Kyle Elias, to give us some more color about working on premise and working on the web, as well as a cloud-based solution and possibly even a 3D experience platform, depending on what you need. So those are all of our beautiful faces. Uh, I don't have my webcam on this morning, but uh, you can just imagine that's what we look like as we're talking with you. So I, I guess now let's go ahead and start talking more about PDM Anywhere. What can we really do? What kind of levels we have? And to do that, I'm going to kick it over to Joe. So Joe. Thank you, Nick. Thank you. They, they don't want to see our web cameras on anyways, because I know that old guy in the middle has got more gray hair than that photo shows. <laughs> <laughs> So, all right, uh, so any of you that have talked to me before, hopefully I've met a few of you, uh, you know I like to throw a little bit of PDM humor out there and uh, going to start it off live right out of the gate here. So, Nick, go ahead and bring up that first picture. <laughs> so, let's think about the three levels, on-prem. All right, I don't know about you guys, but I uh, bet you can't get any closer to the servers than being in the server room. Hopefully, it's nice and air-conditioned in there, too. I'm pretty sure it's going to be really noisy, but second one, think about Web 2, going remote. Well. Folks, it's about as remote as you can get being out on that island. But then again, I don't know about you guys, but if I'm on a remote island that looks that beautiful, I hope you're not thinking about PDM. And then lastly, 3D experience, dealing within the cloud-based, uh, you know, insight. Well, the, this one's for Kyle to pick up on a little bit later. There's my version of cloud computing for you folks. So there, <laughs> give you a little bit of PDM humor, a little bit of Joe-isms there. So with that, these are the three areas we're going to kind of cover. And as Nick said, I'm going to jump in and cover a little bit of on-prem and what two and then cloud uh, then Kyle will pick up and run the rest so when we're talking about on-prem folks we're talking about the first option which is is VPN and I'm sure those of you that, that have uh, been working remotely over the last year with the pandemic have probably experienced at least one of these two ways of doing business so VPN obviously it's a pretty strong connection and and, and we all have probably experienced it or maybe you're not you're talking to IT about doing it don't forget that there's also the option of working offline. And we're going to discuss both these here in a little bit more detail in the next slides. All right, Nick. Thank you. So obviously, if you're connecting over the VPN, we need all the bandwidth we can get. We're working from home most likely, and we might have a pretty strong internet, and some of us might not. Depends on who your, your local ISP is, and, and you're probably grumbling because that means you know what I'm talking about. We've all been there, done that. Um, but the big thing I want people to remember is turn off that SOLIDWORKS add-in. You know, if you got questions or problems, you know, give us a holler. But I want the bandwidth, so get rid of that. Um, next slide. Uh, the thing you can remember is for those of us, and I'll admit it, I'll raise my hand. I'm a SOLIDWORKS, you know, junkie at heart, and I love to get my game on inside SOLIDWORKS, and I really want the add-in. I really like it being right there as a CAD editor. Well, then throttle it back. There's some settings you can do to just... We don't need all the bells and whistles, so I want you guys to remember that. That, that add-in is really gobbling up a lot of information because it's, it's telling PDM how to talk to the server. So let's be kind and, and try to save some of that bandwidth for when we really need it, checking in and checking out and doing things like that. The other thing I want you to remember is hardwire in. With all of us getting better and better capabilities within the house, I mean, my goodness, my ISP just upgraded us to fiber. I was tickled pink, but he also wanted to put a, a, a mesh network throughout my house. And I said, no, I got a brand new killer Linksys, and, and I'm kind of a ham radio junkie, so I'm all about antennas, and yeah, you ain't got to worry about it. I got internet out in the bar, and I got internet in the house everywhere. But that's great on the phone, and that's great for email, and great for some basic stuff. It is not going to help you when you're using SOLIDWORKS. So please try it. You'll be surprised. Plug in. And I know that means a little bit of an inconvenience for some of us because, well, I don't have a long enough CAT6 cable and where am I going to, you know, plug into the router at? Well, all the ports are used. But please don't rely on that Wi-Fi. It gets a little spotty and it just doesn't carry the load like we need for our CAD capabilities. 
working offline. We're shifting gears now. We're getting out of that VPN mentality where I'm, I'm hardwired in and I'm remoting into the environment. Well, don't forget that there is the ability to work offline. Um, try it. You know, when you're at, you know, if once at one, maybe one day a week you're at the office and you want to see what it's like, just go to tools and select work, work offline. Why do I say try that? Next slide, Nick. And that's because I want you to be mindful and watch out for that metadata. You're not going to see everything. So you think working offline is identical to working offline. I'm just remote and, well, I've got everything. I grabbed the whole project folder maybe and I did a right click get latest and I checked out the file because I, I'm, I'm a diligent PDM user. Yeah, metadata is going to be a little different. We're not going to see all that. So there's some tips and tricks that we talked about recently in a blog where it's like, hey, when you're online, do those searches and maybe save them in a, as Excel so you can see that metadata if indeed you do need it. But that's the big thing I want you to watch out for. So play with it. Get an idea of what you see and what you don't see when you are working in offline capacity. So obviously the most important thing is you know getting those local files. We all know that we're working locally with PDM, so get them to your local machine. You're gonna get them when you check them out, but maybe there's reference files I want to have, not just in the assembly I'm working on, stuff inside the work cell or the greater picture. So it doesn't hurt to have, so to speak, too many files. Please don't try to right click on the root of the vault and say get latest version. Oh, that may be a bad thing to do, especially if you work inside a larger vault. But um, there are smaller customers that absolutely could get away with that. Um, but just remember, that's a lot of data you're going to pull down to your machine. Next slide, Nick. So shifting gears up yet again, now we're going to get into that PDM Pro only functionality. Everything else we were talking about, you could pull off a of PDM standard, but now we get up to Web 2 mentality and we start to say, okay, it's a PDM Pro, so I know the people in the room that are booing and hissing me and throwing tomatoes that are PDM standard folks, I'm sorry, but there's a call to action for you there. Um, so let's think about Web 2 and, and what can it do? Well, we know it's going to consume a license, so don't think that when I'm using the Internet, I'm jumping on Google, jumping on Edge, and I'm using that to connect to PDM because IT set up this, this Web 2 portal or environment. You're still going to draw a license. You're still going to use your same user credentials, thus your same permissions to get in. All right, next slide. So. The thing to remember is, well, okay, so I've got an option here relative to Web 2. Who's it really good for? Well, the, the classic that we like to point out is it's great for vendors and customers and, and, and some light-duty users. I would not want you to think uh, uh, any more than that relative to actual CAD usage. And I'll go into those here in a little bit more detail. So when we think about vendors, you know, what are the vendors going to want to do? Well, it's great for them, you know, especially when you think about we have a handful of key vendors, Joe, folks that, that we've been working with for years, and they're even on the same version of SolidWorks as us, and, and we're constantly giving them files, whether it's Dropbox or email, and it gets really arduous and painful. And you've come up with a really finite process to keep your sanity on, on revision control. Well, then they definitely would think about them. It gives them that easy access to see that data. Data. Maybe they're going to make a part for you or for them to push data back because maybe that, that vendor's working with you on cleaning up some CAD data and saying, well, this is how I'd like to make the car part and I made some tweaks to the model and he sends it back to you. Next slide. So now when we think about customers, let's go to the other end of that spectrum. Customers are feeding you information, so it's great for them. A lot of times you're working on a, a specific software. In this case, we're talking about SolidWorks. So, of course, you're usually in sync with your customers, and your vendors are usually in sync with you. So, again, spin that attitude upstream and say, well, it's a great way for my customers to log in and push me new prints. So again, it, it, on the front end, it usually isn't that heavily used a Web2 mentality for customers as opposed to the back end. But then uh, when we move to that third capacity here where we talk about light duty SolidWorks users, big thing there I want you to really appreciate is light duty. If you're a power SolidWorks user, you are not going to like Web2. It, will it work great for approving files as a, as a manager and taking a look at the status files? Absolutely. If you're a consumer of information in PDM, absolutely works great. Will it work great in a pinch? I've done it. I've been remote, headed to a customer and realized the night before, sitting in a hotel room, I said, oops, 
I don't have all the files locally I thought I had. I needed to use the hotel Wi-Fi and connect in through Web2, get the extra files I needed, maybe even check out a file or two. A little bit painful, especially over the hotel Wi-Fi, but I pulled it off. Took me an hour or so, a little bit longer, got the dinner late, but I got the files I needed in that pinch. So I want you to appreciate it is there, but it's really, that's not what it's really meant for. That vendor category is spot on for Web2. So with that, um, I turn the floor back to you, Nick. Yeah, and so the question that we have to ask ourselves is are we getting the most out of our PDM system? You know, with PDM standard, you can work remotely via like a VPN, but what happens when you get those users that need to access it, maybe not from the office. Of course, a lot of us haven't been working in the office recently, not in the last year. So how can we really do that? Is the VPN really just not cutting it anymore? Sometimes you might want to look at getting replicated sites. You know, if you've got multiple buildings scattered throughout a state or the country or the world, maybe you want to get those people working on the same file set as you. Maybe they're having issues. I was just talking to a customer earlier. They've got a user base over in Europe and it's taking them 30 minutes to pull a file over a VPN. So maybe they can benefit from having a replicated site, getting people working in essence locally next to them and sharing those files across servers, but those servers are local to them. Or perhaps you could really start using a web-based portal, getting people on your web to client, making sure that you can get those vendors involved. I like to talk about maybe you can get manufacturing, have those prints up on a screen. It's a really nice way of making sure that we can cut down on our paper and it gives people easy access because you don't have to install it client side. So if you want to talk with us, uh, I'll, we're always here to talk about PDM Pro. We think that that's a really cool tool. You know, if you're on standard and it's just not cutting it, give us a call. We'll talk with you about PDM Pro, how it can really help you, how you can really use PDM Pro to work from anywhere. But when we talk about PDM from anywhere, a lot of people say, well, doesn't that mean we're going to talk about cloud-based? And this is where I'm going to hand the floor over to Kyle. And he's going to give us some talking about, you know, how can we host a tool like PDM in the cloud? What does that mean? What is the cloud? So Kyle, I'll turn it over to you. Yeah, for sure. Thank you, Nick. Appreciate that. So uh, just a quick intro here. You know, everything we talked about thus far is uh, using existing systems, existing PDM uh, that they're, they're already implemented, already running, and using some of its capability to work from, from your home or, or whatever you work from today. But uh, the idea going forward here is talking about hosting your system in a cloud environment. What does that really mean? So if you can give me a click there, Nick. Um, let's let's let that sink in for a minute. Uh, I want to bring you guys to bring awareness to if, if you guys are using a cloud system, you're basically using someone else's machine. Uh, so we shouldn't be afraid of the term. We shouldn't be afraid of hosting our data on the cloud. Literally, you're just paying somebody to use their infrastructure, and uh, I don't think we should be afraid of that. One more click there, Nick. I want to talk to you guys a little bit about IAS. So what does it mean? It basically stands for Infrastructure as a Service. Uh, let's give me a couple of clicks there, Nick. We do have some uh, partners that we work with, mainly Advance 2000. But uh, if you are, guys are already on Azure or are using Amazon Web Services, we can definitely help you get started with moving your server uh, to those environments. That's not a problem there. Also, what you get with some of those is a flat rate. So you kind of have a predictable core, uh, price. You're not, you know, you don't have to upgrade your server every two years or so because you're just basically on that subscription model. Of course, support is included with it. Um, Security can be dialed up as you need it. You can add PDM to it. You can also add SOLIDWORKS to it. So if you want us to kind of create uh, virtual machines, what we call VDIs, to use SOLIDWORKS on a cloud environment, maybe you know you need a bit more powerful machine that can uh, do some simulation or, or whatever the case may be, we can have definitely have those VDIs available. And of course, um, you can access it from anywhere. Last thing I'll mention here on this slide is Insight. And Info just built this program, which is tailored to you. So if you need help, maybe with upgrades every year or with a more personal touch or dedicated support, dedicated PDM admin, we can do all that under that Insight umbrella. It just basically means we're connected with you on a personal level versus what you get uh, through regular support. One more click there, Nick. 
So uh, the idea here is to talk about some of the benefits, what we've seen over the years and what IAS brings to kind of get, bring awareness to what, what it really means and why this, do people usually go to a cloud system. The first one here being licensing. Of course, licensing is included with your cloud system. So like your Windows Server licensing, Windows 10 machines, firewalls, we use a lot of Sophos firewalls, um, Microsoft SQL can be included. All that is baked into your cost, it's predictable, and you don't have to keep worrying about keeping track of that first and maybe renewing subscriptions or paying for that over time. Of course, backup is also included. So if you guys are after a backup solution, usually we do a 30 day rolling backup. And what that really means is on the 31st day, your first backup is deleted and it just keeps doing that. In case disaster strikes, it's very easy to grab any one of those 30 backups and bring up a new machine and kind of get going right away. So uh, the licensing backup is, is a very good uh, idea or a very good benefit of having a cloud system. One more click there, Nick. Next, we're gonna talk a little bit about upgrade and support. So with the cloud system on any provider, Windows Server upgrades can be included. Maybe security patches can definitely be inclu included. If you guys are on that Insight program, we can even include SOLIDWORKS and SOLIDWORKS PDM upgrades every year for you. Even SQL can be upgraded for you. So I'd like to say that we can dial up the help as much as you need it. If you want us to do everything for you, we absolutely can. And the most important part of this is also hardware upgrades. So you don't have to ever worry about maybe increasing your RAM or your hard drive or changing your motherboard that's been fried. All the hardware upgrades are done in the background. You have the latest and greatest technology there and you don't have to worry about that. Also, support. 24-7 uh, support is provided with pretty much any cloud provider today. Uh, that allows you to support different offices in different time zones. So if you have an office in Europe and they're having problems, they can call in, it's not a problem. And uh, it, it just allows you a lot of uh, flexibility in what you can do and, and who you can support. One more click there, Nick. Next, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, keeping up with technology. So today, pretty much the lifespan of a server is like what, one, three, three to five years, I'd say. You don't have to ever worry about buying a server anymore if you go to this cloud system. You don't have to worry about where you're going to put it. Um, is it going to be in a closet? How am I going to get access to it? How am I going to get it? Uh, the cooling right? You just basically pay like the picture says here, let the big guys experiment with that. Let Microsoft pay to have a server on the water to better uh, cooling, to better have a cooling solution. So let them pay with that, let them experiment with that. You're basically just paying for that service and getting access to it. And you don't have to worry about some of that uh, technology upgrade and uh, keeping track of capital expenditures and things like that. And the final slide we're gonna talk about here is a little bit about security. I'd like to say that we can dial up security as you need it. Of course, you're connected, your connection to the cloud server is encrypted. So uh, it's very secure, but we can dial it up uh, as you need it to. We can add firewall rules. We can add virtual firewalls, um, even virtual environments if you're after that. But uh, if security is on your mind, Definitely shoot us some questions. We can definitely involve some of our partners. They're definitely the experts on that and get them questions or get your questions answered, get them the questions that uh, you have. Now let's change gears a little bit and talk about Insight. All that we talked about thus far is some of the benefits that are involved with hosting your data and using one of the cloud providers that are available out there. The Inflow Insight program is basically support on steroids. It allows us to kind of support you on a personal level. So we'd have a dedicated person uh, to be your admin. We'd have a dedicated person doing your upgrades every year. Uh, we can add and take functionality as you need it. So one more slide there, Nick. And we're going to talk a little bit about some of the tiers that are available in Insight. We basically broke it down in brown, silver, gold kind of format. Uh, bronze and silver are kind of set in stone. They basically, we can, you know, show you a list of what's included on both of them. But uh, what I really want to allude to here is gold. That doesn't necessarily mean means more expensive. It just means it's a tailored program. 
So for instance, do you want us to do your upgrade? We can put that in go. You want us to just be your uh, admin for the year? Do you want us to sit down with you every couple of months and talk about next steps or how you can better your system? Basically, Gold is an a la carte program. We can dial up the help as you need it, or you can just have you know one of the items and uh, do that every year for you. So just keep that in mind if you go uh, inside was built to kind of fill this niche where people maybe don't have the capacity to be an admin or don't want to be an admin or uh, one is doing their upgrades every year whatever the case may be inside can fill that gap for you and do some of those uh, mundane tasks for you so when we really think about the insight program and the cloud-based solution it really comes down to do you know do you need to start looking at a cloud-based system we've seen a, a huge uptick in that over the last year i think everybody's kind of thinking well how can we have a cloud-based solution you know we want to have that security of the consistent backups we want to make sure that we can always access this we want really good uptime we don't want to worry about that that's all things that you might want to consider as you look at it do you want to deal with the software upgrades and the licensing no it's talk more about the talking more about the PDM side of things. Well, when you want to deal with your PDM upgrades, you know, maybe you have maybe you're brand new to PDM and you don't quite have an admin or maybe unfortunately your your previous admin just left and you don't have time to spin someone up to be your new admin quite yet and you need some help for a year. Well, that's where insight comes in. So, we can help you with that stuff. That's exactly why insight was a thing. You know, people say, you know, we don't we don't have anyone right now that can be an internal admin. We we're hammered. It's our busy season. We need someone to help us. Can you help us with it? Well, that's where we can come into play. You know, we can help you get up on the cloud. Once on the cloud, you don't have to worry about the hardware. And then if you put us on Insight, well, now you don't have to worry about the software either. Now it's a completely managed solution. And it's kind of like the solution that we're going to talk about next, which is the 3D experience platform, which I'll hand that back over to Kyle, because if you want to talk about, you know, the infrastructure as a service, that's a cloud-based solution. If you want to talk about a software as a service, a SaaS model, that's kind of where the 3D experience platform comes into play even more. So Kyle, let me toss it back over to you. And we'll go into the 3D experience platform. Thanks, Nick. That's a great way to think about it. IAS versus the SaaS model is completely different. Uh, basically, um, although the 3D experience platform has similar capability than PDM, like vaulting solutions, workflow capabilities, permissions, so on and so forth, it's a completely different system. The clicks are completely different. The interface is completely different. And it does not require an infrastructure. So it's a full-on cloud solution. Basically, you just log in, kind of like your Netflix account. As long as you're paying for it, you can log in, you can experience everything there is in there. So let's uh, give, give me a click there, Nick. Now, this slide here, um, although I put 3D experience there on the top of the pyramid, I do want to make sure you guys understand it doesn't have to be there. It just means it can be there. So, for example, if you want 3D experience to play a SOLIDWORKS PDM standard role, it can adapt to be just that. And it won't be, you know, that costly solution that comes with a high end solution. So what I like to say is 3D experience grows with you. In a nutshell, you can add capability to it over time. You can start with like PDF standard capability on the cloud, like check in, check out, you know, permissions, um, a simple CAD release kind of workflow and grow over time, add project management, add simulation, add some ERP functionality and uh, so on and so forth. So. 3D experience platform is very um, malleable, I'm going to call it. So you can grow it over time if you need it to. Now, let's talk about the target there a little bit for 3D experience. Of course, younger generation is a target for that. So people that are, you know, fresh off college or even in college, people that are used to the cloud that have been using it for years are kind of, you know, understand what it is and not afraid of it, that's definitely a good target for it just because they're kind of already in that mindset of using a cloud solution. Next one, innovators, entrepreneurs. Those are companies that maybe don't necessarily have the infrastructure, right? They don't have a server that they can host PDM on. They can use the 3D experience platform to kind of host their data, collaborate with others and not have, you know, huge capital expenditure getting the systems up and running to host a PDM solution. Current users are also a target. So if you're using SOLIDWORKS today, uh, we can definitely show you how SOLIDWORKS interfaces with the cloud. It basically has an add-in, very similar to the PDM add-in that allows you to collaborate, save your files, you know, uh, get permissions, search, so on and so forth, right on the cloud. 
So if you're currently using SOLIDWORKS today and want to use a, don't have a data management solution and want to think about that cloud, we can definitely help you there, show you what it can do. And of course, out of office individuals. So those are people that are on the go all the time. Maybe they need to collaborate with vendors, with their own customers, share data. Of course, that's a prime target for 3D experience just because you know, you're on the go all the time. You don't want to be tied to a server that's in your office if you're on the go all the time. Now, a little bit different than uh, SOLIDWORKS PDM, the 3D experience platform is a little bit more pre-configured, right? You kind of get what you get. Of course, there's a lot of setup that's needed, like permissions and how you want your files to behave, who you want approving things. But the workflow themselves, we call them life cycles, are pretty pre-configured. You can change their name, but you can't change what they are. And the same goes for you know how you make an you know an engineering change over the cloud, how do you get approvals on the cloud. Those are kind of pre-configured. And what that really means is your setup time, your your implementation time is minimal. It's very easy to get started just because as soon as you're on that subscription model, you can pretty much right away log in and start using it. Of course, we wouldn't recommend you do that. We do have some training courses that we would recommend to kind of get you guys going. But it, in a nutshell, it's usually easier to get started just because that system is already on the clouds, already pre-configured, and uh, it, it just means we can uh, set that up for you a little bit faster. And the next question that I get a lot of the times is why move to the cloud? And the best way I've found to kind of explain that is to understand what we're doing today. Today, we have many different apps performing many different things. Um, some of them require IT uh, infrastructure, like a server, IT overhead, somebody needs to be paying attention to it. Um, you're paying subscriptions to different people. And I think the most important part of it all is that the apps don't really communicate with each other. So, you know, transitioning data from one app to another, uh, sometimes it's not that simple, it's not that intuitive. What well, the 3D Experience Platform proposes is a one-stop shop. It wants to be, you know, that one solution that you reference for all of your data. It doesn't require infrastructure. It doesn't require IT overhead. And it's that one stop shop. You're just paying subscription to that one person. So, of course, it's not going to replace all the apps or all the solutions you use today, but it can't replace a good amount of them. So, the things like uh, Swim Communities allows you conversational history markup solutions, 3D solutions, vaulting solutions, all that lives in 3D experience, and that we can definitely show you in depth uh, a demonstration of the system if you're after that. But uh, that's the best way I kind of found to explain, you know, why I would be even interested in going to the cloud. It, it's, uh, it concatenates and it saves a lot of time and effort uh, between moving from app to app. And I would say that collaboration is probably the biggest keyword that you can possibly have for the 3D experience platform. We're collaborating app to app, user to user, process to process. Everything inside a platform, it's designed to talk to each other. It's all living on the same thing. You get to it by going to a web browser. So if you want to talk about, you know, why do we need this? Why would I want a tool like this? I can access it from any device. You know, if, if you think about SolidWorks, we all love SolidWorks. We all think it's a really cool tool, but I can't put SolidWorks on my phone. I can't put SolidWorks on my tablet. And that, that's just because that's not how SOLIDWORKS is designed versus if I have a 3D experience platform and I've got a tool like Etshape, which is one of the, the modeling softwares that the 3D experience platform has, I can design that on my tablet and I can quickly show it to somebody else, hand it to them. Uh, we can play around and, and just do this all from the web. It gets IT off your back as well. You know, IT doesn't have to worry about maintaining a server because the 3D experience platform, it's a cloud solution. It's not on premise. It's, it's something that you don't have to maintain those servers if you don't want to. So you can work from anywhere. You don't have to worry about your servers, maintaining those. It's all done by a third party. It's maintained by Dassault. So if you're curious about some of those capabilities, obviously the 3D experience platform has a lot of really cool benefits. And that's, this is just scratching the surface of why it's cool from a technology side. But you know, how can I use it? What can I really do inside of it? Well, that's where we have those demonstrations. Like Kyle said, there's a lot of things we can show you. We can show you the processes. We can show you modeling inside of it. We can show you getting users involved tons of flexibility to 3D experience platform. It's this growing ecosystem for tons and tons of users to, to get started on and see what you can do with it. So if you have any questions about it, if you're curious about it, if you just want to talk and say, what is this thing? It sounds interesting, but I'm curious. Give us a call. We're happy to talk. And, and I had to have some fun with this one too, Joe. So I chose the picture of my first cell phone, which uh, I, I affectionately called the brick 
So pick up the brick and, and give us a call. We're happy to talk to you about the platform. So that's all we have for today. Thank you everybody for joining us today for this webinar. I, I really appreciate you spending this time with us this morning.